Hey, dear. Hello. Come on. We're going to sit over here. Okay. We're really switching gears. Oh, good. good to see you, too. Thank you for joining me. Have a seat. Wait, can I take a selfie with you first? Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank there you. you go. My wife saw that. We're good, hon. Say cheese. So tell us a little about yourself. So my name is Stephanie Vitaco, and I've been selling... I have a few people. Um, I've been selling real estate for 33 years in the greater Los Angeles area. Whoa, what did you do before that? Um, well, I was 12 when I started. So. Good answer. So just real estate. Okay. I pretty much straight out of, I was in the fashion industry for a short period of time, uh -huh. and then I went straight into real estate at a pretty young age. That's awesome. In, in that area? So yes, only in the San area. Fernando Valley. It's where I grew up, and it's all I know. So just to get perspective, um, uh, last year, can you just share with us the, the, the size of your business? Sure. So um, last year I closed, I believe, 194 units. And um, pretty consistently, I'll do anywhere in a retail market, uh, anywhere from 160 to 200, uh, over 100 million. And in a foreclosure market, it will kick up to 350. I think my best year was 420. So, give us a sense of the 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 the, the makeup of your of your organization. Sure. So, when I got into the industry. I was with um, the largest independent in the state of California, which was Fred Sands Realtors. Yeah. And wonderful mentor. Yes. And about three years in, when I was getting my bearings, I realized I needed to find a way to leverage my time. Uh. And I wanted to hire other agents. And he shut me down. He said, you can't do that. I'm the broker. Oh. He said, if you want to do that, you need to go get your own broker's license and become your own broker. Nobody was doing teams in those days. Yeah. So I didn't want to open up on my own, so I figured out that I needed to figure another way to be able to get it all done and do a good job. So that answer actually was pivotal in the way you thought about it. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. What did you do? So I built it administratively. Just started with one person administratively, and then we got so busy because she was able to alleviate me from all the duties that mm -hmm. need to go on with providing a good service. Right. And then we, I just grew it organically. So my business is where it is me in someone's living room, dining room, kitchen. So you're, you're, you're the exact opposite of a lot of, a lot of uh, people that we might put on this stage, and that is you don't have a sales team. No, I do not. It's you're, an me. In, you're an individual. You're looking at her, yep. Yeah, let's just medicate. Let's just medicate on that for a second. I mean, <laughs> that's a big deal. Thank you. I mean, so can you, we don't have a lot of time, but I would love for you to kind of tell us how that morphed. Can you tell us what that journey for you was? Sure. So when I found myself uh, in the office till one in the morning, sleeping under my desk. Um, that was not an efficient use of my time. Although I have good energy, it is a little, is a little much. So um, it was literally hiring people and breaking it down into kind of like an assembly line okay. where okay. I have different people who support me in different tasks. Kind of like when you have surgery, you've got somebody who comes in and gives you the anesthesia. You've got someone who does this, someone does this, someone does this, someone does this. And then the doctor shows up and does the surgery. So what was the, so when you made your first hire, what was, what was their role? So it's actually pretty funny. I had, I was deemed a fire hazard in the office because I had stuff all over the floor. They wouldn't give me more space. Okay. So I just took over the aisles. And a woman who was twice my age, she came over to me. She was going through a divorce. She was a great agent. And she, as I was sprawled out on the floor, literally, she had her hands on her hips, and she looked down at me, and she said, do you need my help? And I said, I I'm terrified. I can't afford you. What if I can't pay you? I don't know if I'll do another deal. I was three years in the business. Yeah. She said, you'll be fine. Just hire me for 90 days, and then we'll go from there. Oh. And I said, okay. And then it grew from there. We, she freed me up so much, because, of course, I still stayed in the office till 1 in the morning. <laughs> And I don't do that anymore. Good. Um, on occasion. 
So what did she do? So stop that. So so what did she do? So she came in. So yes. So she came. What did she What did she help you do that you needed the most at that? Point? Everything. So doing all of the the paperwork, all of the you know everything relating to getting the listing ready to go, helping me get prepped for an appointment, helping me with the comps, helping me with calling the client daily throughout the escrow process, everything. But it was just her and I. And because it freed me up to do so much more, we had to hire another person and another person until we broke it down to, you know, you're in charge of just this aspect. You're in charge of just this aspect. So each person had that, has that role of what their uh, client care is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how many people do you have administratively in your business? I have six people administratively and then one girl who comes in one day a week, floater. Gotcha. So how do you make all that work? Very carefully. A lot of transactions. Yeah, it is. So share with us how that works for you. So um, literally the breakdown would be, um, I am, I am a, I'm, a, I'm a high, so in coming over to Keller Williams, I was with, can I say who I was with? Sure, it's okay. I went through a business divorce with Coldwell Banker. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. And, it's all good. Okay. Um, and I had absolutely no intention of making any move whatsoever, but I have a, there's a, there's a wonderful gentleman, gentleman in my area in Encino, and his name is Harma Hartuni. And he's a stellar human being. And he had hit me up, and I, I mean, I get, I get called frequently by the other brokerage firms, and I never take those meetings. I don't know, he's got a charm to him. So I spoke to him without any intention of making a move. And then that was years before and then when the time came that there was a problem, oh. I called him. Oh. So one of the reasons that I did come over to Keller Williams, which was um, January of 14, so this is going on my seventh year, right. was because I wanted to learn. I've learned how to master doing close to 200 transactions retail on my own, but there's only so many days in the year. So I wanted to take advantage and eventually learn how to do what so many of these other talented people in this room do, which is to leverage their time through other people. Right. And uh, in fact, I think I need a good MAPS coach. Well, we all need a coach. There's no question about that. So what are your biggest challenges? So talk to us for a minute about the two or three things that, um, that are your biggest challenges. Um, well, there's many. And um, they're continually changing. Okay. But I would say just that it is just me. So it stops and starts with me. Okay. Um, and just, I, I enjoy it, but also I do see that there's other ways to skin a cat. Okay. I don't like that saying, I have a cat. But, um. <laughs> well, let's think, of it, let's think about the question a little differently. And that is, along this journey from um, starting over 30 years ago to today, what have been the, the handful of obstacles or challenges that you had to overcome to, to get to the businesswoman you are today? So number one was perfecting my listing presentation. So that's key. I have about 87% uh, conversion rate. Um, if I go on an appointment, my goal is to get the listing. Um, so and what's the key to perfecting your listing presentation? Practice. Oh. Practice. They say that... Fred Astaire practiced the same step for eight hours for weeks on end. So it's practice, it's hitting your head, hitting my head against the wall yeah. until I found what works and what doesn't work. And it's breaking through pain points and it's very painful. Yeah, a lot of people practice on life patience. Yeah. <laughs> and they shouldn't do that. It, 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 does, it does happen. Or being on an appointment and finding out what to say, what not to say. There's so many small nuances to really perfecting your your craft and your skill. And that's just going, that's just meeting with people face to face and being able to really read their personality and mm -hmm. morph yourself to, to them. Yeah, I get that. What else? Um, challenges. Yeah. Staff. Okay. People. People. Okay. So talk to us about that. Oi. <sighs> um, it's finding good people. It's retaining good people. It's... So how do you find good people? Uh, so, um, 
Keller Williams, my, my OP, and my team leader have been very, very supportive with helping me find good people that, are, that, are, that support me. So that's been a big deal. So what would be your definition of a good person? When you say find good people, um, what, are you, what are you looking for when you say so that? So somebody who can be a mini-me to a certain degree, yeah. that they will, I think we all have a certain style, yeah. and when a client hires me, if I have somebody step in that has a completely different style, it can be a little jarring. Yeah. So um, I also have a very high work ethic. I am a little demanding, that's what, what I've been told. And um, I expect a lot from the people who, who work for me. So it's someone who is... Can I just stop? Please. I, I think demanding and, and setting a high expectation for people that work for you, that's probably the secret. Because what would the opposite be? I'm not demanding, and I don't have a standard for how you're going to behave oh, yeah. and do your work. Yeah, then well, that's not going to work, is it? No. No. Absolutely not. So what's the secret with working with your administrative team? What makes that click? I think they see the personal side. I think they see really who I am, and um, I'm, very, I'm very real with them. I just I say it like it is. I don't mess around, um, and I try to really give them, I, I will micromanage them in the beginning until I see that they've got it, and then I just want them to do their thing, and I really don't want to. So the, the, the secret there is, is hire, hire the right person. Correct. And the other thing I heard you say, which I, I absolutely agree with, is hire people that can work in your environment. Who, who, who want to work the way you work. Yes. That the way you work, as demanding as you are, with high standards, doesn't offend them. Correct. There's no conflict between you and your administrative team. Correct. I've had people who've come to work for me over the years and they've said, Stephanie, we want to, we w I want to join your team, I want to work for you. And I go through the process and they come in and they're like, this is a little much. I've had uh, <laughs> three people go to lunch and never come back. Yep. So. Um, I've had that happen. <laughs> Better to get them out in the beginning. Well, it's okay. I mean, it's totally okay. The, the, ultimately, what people don't understand, the secret to great hiring is knowing who you are. Yes. And really knowing who you are. Yeah. And then finding people that, that are lockstep with you in ethics, morals, integrity. Absolutely. Work ethic. Yeah. So you're not really, like you said, you're, you're, you're micromanaging. This is my interpretation of what you said, is you're micromanaging on the front end to make sure that you're in alignment, that their standards yes. match your standards, and that the way they're doing it is the way that you, you would treat people to get those done. Once they got that, you don't want to micromanage that. Yeah, absolutely. Side by side until they're off and running, and then if they come into my office, it's, I don't want to hear a lot of all of it, just what I am trying to accomplish is, and then they can tell me what they yeah, need. People don't realize that the secret to building a great organization, a support business like you've done, is hiring the right people, not managing people. In other words, you don't manage people into being the right person, Correct. right? And the, because at the end of the day, you didn't get into real estate to be a manager of people. I'm a horrible manager. Yeah. Well, mo and by the way, most great successful people are. And the reason that they're successful is is not because they learned how to be a better manager. They learned to hire better. They hire, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to hire anybody that makes you become a manager. Correct. That's a whole other set of skills. That's a whole other job. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one I don't have. Right. Know thyself. Right. That's exactly right. So what's the, um, before we ran out of time, what's the, what's, how do you generate the relationships, the, the leads as you would call it, but sure. the relationships <laughs> to ultimately have that big of a, of a clientele base? So I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I don't, I'm not a, cold collar, I'm not an expired, they scare me. Um, it's mostly past clients, referrals, networking, um, referrals from other agents, and I, I know this is going to sound kind of corny, but I've always based my business, if I do a good job for you, you're going to refer me to your friends. No, so corny. organically that's it's worked that yeah, way. That's the basis of it. And when you got started, you didn't have any of, you didn't have the repeat business so no. you know, so what'd you do? Um, I was told that I needed to door knock so I would 
sit in my car and I would usually wear a ponytail and I would like literally have an argument with myself, get out of the car, just get out of the car. I'd pull my ponytail so I would have to get out of the car. Um, it's so scary to door knock. Conway, but we get it. It's, yep, I door knocked, sat open houses, I cold called. I literally did whatever they told me to do and I took floor time in the day. And I'm gonna jump ahead, but I assume you did that until you didn't have to. In the second you didn't have to, you stopped. I did. Yeah, I should. I should door knock. It still works. Not necessarily. You know that. That you just described to me. Um, I was willing to do those things. But yeah. I didn't enjoy it. Me too. I didn't. I didn't like it. But that was my personality. It's okay if you like doing that. I didn't. I agree. I did it till I didn't have to do it. Yeah. In the second I didn't have to do it, I stopped. Whew. But that's. But, but there are a lot of people listening to you, and they're going, I don't want to do that. And the problem is. So there's a period in life, if you want to lead your biggest life, yeah. you have to do the things I don't like to do that are not me. Absolutely. You have to get over, your, you have to get over that. That's true. Don't you? 100%. And yes. how did you do that? I mean, in the end, I mean, how did you really do that? I just... Other than the ponytail, I don't have one to get <laughs> I had goals, okay. and I knew, I worked it, I reverse engineered it. If I want this, I need to do this, this, and this. I have to talk to this many people. I was extremely young. I looked really young. Nobody wanted to trust their real estate with me. Yeah. People would ask me how old I was, and yes. literally on the first probably 30 files, I would find myself, I didn't want to say I was, you know, as young as I was, because yeah. I was younger than their kids. So I would say, well, guess how old I am. And then whatever they said, I would add two or three years. Oh. But <laughs> these people started to become my friends. Story. Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, but I, would, I had to write down my age on the front of the file and circle it because they became my friends. And then I was like, yeah, what have I got myself into? Yes. Yeah, with the Smiths on this age, with the Jones on that age, I got that. Now nobody asks me anymore. Okay. <laughs> now when you, when you were dating before you got married, did, did you play that game as well? No, not oh, at all. Not, not, with, not with men, just with my clients. I'm teasing. Okay, so, um, Wrap this up. If you were, if um, you could give us a piece of advice or two, uh, I'm sitting in the audience, and I'm, I'm and again, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by everything you've said, and I'm, I'm going. You know what? I identify with her. What do I do? Do the basics. Don't give up. Many. I'm, there's no crying in real estate, but in the beginning. I would sit in the conference room and there would be some tears. Yeah. Um, and just stick to it. It's like anything. If you want it bad enough, you find a way to make it happen and you break through the pain, pain points. And you will fail and you just got to get back up. Yeah. Simple. I love that. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. I really